Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about Season 2, Episode 7 of FX's Dave, entitled Ad Man. This episode cuts back and forth between present day, where Dave is on the XXL freshman class, and he's about to do the cipher, with his past life at an ad agency with Emma. Um, one thing that I really liked about this episode, and, th and, and I think this is... Well, there's a lot of things I liked about this episode. I thought it was a great episode, but... Um, Maybe I'm just slow, <laughs> but now it's kind of all starting to come together for me, the purpose of this season, and I have a uh, an unpleasant suspicion of the direction that we're heading, which is uh, we've been spending this season focused on Dave's narcissism. His desire to be great has fueled his narcissism and caused him to alienate his friends who have been there for him consistently. They've helped him along the way. We've all seen it. We've seen it in season one. We saw it in this episode in flashbacks. His friends have always been there for him. And now that he's on the cusp of stardom, they're still there for him, but he's doing more and more to alienate them. And we see that, uh, we see how this it reaches this, uh, this breaking point for Emma in this episode because, you know, she was there for him at the ad agency. They're, they're working on this Mountain Dew ad. She gassed him up to, to crash this, crash this pitch and do this rap and he did it and he nailed it and she's always been there to support him he kind of then kind of like at the end of the rap you could tell by her reaction that this probably wasn't expected he kind of like bigs himself up at the end of the at the end of the rap after he's done talking about Mountain Dew and Emma seems a bit you know thrown off by that and then we we juxtapose that with present day where he, he's trying to figure out how he's going to do this rap he's like I don't know what the beat's going to sound like it's hard for me to do a a freestyle to a beat where I don't know what kind of tempo it's going to have. You know, all my written shit is pretty much already released. Like, so he's freaking out. And who comes to the rescue? Emma. She flirts with DJ Drama, gets the beat. He's money. And then Dave East changes the beat up. And now he's screwed because they can't change it back because they all need to be rapping over the same beat. Dave East won't go, won't go back to the original beat that Dave was prepared for. And Dave bombs the uh, bombs the cipher, and it and like I said, it closed with a great sh uh, a great cross cut between um, him nailing the pitch and looking satisfied, but we know having kind of like hurt Emma a little bit with him bombing the cipher, and Emma, I don't know about you guys, looking strangely satisfied by his his bombing. So um, I, th I think this was a great episode, but there's a, there's a few things I want to talk about that I really like, and, and uh, I'm going to get into a few of those things. There's one thing, I, I wouldn't even call it a criticism or a con, it's, it's kind of just me being greedy <laughs> regarding a show that I really enjoy, but um, one of the things that I, first thing I want to talk about is I'm glad that we finally get to see Dave rap again. It's, it's been a while. I like watching him rap. He has undeniable charisma. Like, you can't help but watch his raps and enjoy it. Like, he's, he's just really charismatic and I felt like one of the if, if I were to levy a criticism against this show it would be that we don't get to see him rap enough and granted this show isn't about uh showcasing Dave's raps it's about uh showcasing him as a person and what his own how his own character flaws impact himself and his relationships and whatnot so it's not necessarily about hey here let's showcase this guy's rap skills but I do wish we could see him rap a little bit more and we got that this week um, and I also love the writing on this show because like, you know, there's, there's a, a I'm going to get into a couple of things in a moment, but there's several instances where I'm just like, you know, this is a really smart approach to this. And then I also like the fact Dave, Dave's the co-creator of this show, Lil Dicky. He's a co-creator of this show. He's written episodes. He wrote, uh, episode five, the bar mitzvah episode. He wrote the finale. Um, and I think it's just interesting that he's so willing to, uh, to put a, to put a magnifying glass and a spotlight on himself and and look at how you know like he it's, it's very clear to me that he understands his place in hip-hop he understands that he is like a foreigner and that he doesn't necessarily belong and rather than trying to pretend to be someone that does he instead does this show where he kind of like highlights that shit and it's like yeah you know i am entitled because that's how this episode opens right they're cutting like doing like a promo for this cipher and like little Yachty tells this story about why he got into rap and like oh, I was broke as fuck yada 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 and then um 
designer fucking ridiculous designer tells a rid ridiculous fucking story well the story's not ridiculous but ridiculous how he tells it but he tells a brief story about what made him get into hip-hop and then dave tells this long drawn out elaborate story that's full of entitlement and privilege and i, I like that because it shows that that Lil dicky is aware that he doesn't fit in and he's not hiding that he's highlighting it and i think that's kind of cool um and he really did that a lot in this episode um, I also thought the actress who played Emma did a great job. Um, she had to do a lot with facial expressions. Uh, you know, during the, the the flashbacks with the ad campaign, you could tell when she's happy with Dave, when she's dissatisfied with Dave, she does it with facial expressions. And again, the facial expressions she made when he kind of, after he finished the Mountain Dew portion of the rap, when he kind of started talking about himself, she looked, you know, taken aback by that. He did shout her out at the end, but um, it was on a very kind of like, and also she did the pictures like, you know, and, you know, we, we find out in this episode that for all intents and purposes, she's kind of put off uh, her dream of being a director to help facilitate Dave's career. We see her sacrifice, not sacrifice, but we see her push him to do the Mountain Dew thing. Uh, she's now currently doing his videos. Uh, she finagles the beat out of DJ drama all for him to just kind of like play her to the left. So now he's lost another person. And to kind of run that back to what I was saying at the beginning about him severing his narcissism, severing these relationships, we've seen it with everybody, right? We've seen it with Mike. Mike's walking around lonely on his birthday, uh, you know, chasing after people over trash cans and shit. Like we've seen it with Mike. We've seen it with Els a lot this season. You know, the what Dave, how Dave has severed that relationship with his narcissism. Um, we saw it with Allie. Uh, we saw it with Allie last season, and we've seen it with Allie this season as well. And now we've just seen it with Emma. So what does that mean? I think it means we're probably going to see it with Gata, which I, I don't know about you guys. I ain't ready for that shit. Gata is so... I fucking love Gata, man. Like, that scene where he's talking to that kid, he doesn't even really say shit, but he's so goddamn motivational. Like, like you can't... Like, you'll be all right, little dude. Like, I used to be like you. I used to be a kid. They're like, I can't even say it. Like, he says, like, these normal fucking words, but, like, it's almost like you hear, oh, it's like, what the fuck? Like, he's so fucking motivational, man. And he's such a good dude. Like, I... I Man, I'm not ready to see Dave fuck that up, man. And I feel like that's where we're headed. And I hope it. I hope we end up in a place where he, you know, realizes what he's done. He somehow makes up for it. And maybe he, you know, finally drops his album and is dope. You know, so I want us to end up in that place and not to end up in the place where he's alone. You know, Els has abandoned him. Mike's abandoned him. Emma's abandoned him. Allie's dating that weirdo from that restaurant. And, and now Gata and Emma are off, you know, facilitating Gator's career and Dave is alone. Like, I don't want to end in a depressed place like that. I, I don't know which way we're going to go, but I think we're going to go in one of those two directions at the end. And whether I, I, it's something that I, as a fan, want to experience or not, I feel like it's going to be a great ending regardless of how I feel about it, like, viscerally. Like, if I'm like, oh, man, I hate to see, you know, Dave alone and everybody have a, has abandoned him. I'm going to hate to see that, but they've, they've been setting this up all season and it's great writing, so... Um, yeah, incredible work, but a couple more things I want to talk about. Um, they did a good job, I think, of subtly showing how women are treated in the ad agency, which, you know, if you've watched Mad Men, <laughs> you've seen a whole lot of how women get treated in the ad agency, but, um, you know, they, they, Dave and the boss kind of bond over, uh, over football and then they play her on the yards after catch thing. And I, as soon as she said it, I'm like, I noticed that. Cause I don't, I don't like when. Um, a word is included in an acronym and then people tack the word onto there like uh, uh, like pin machine. No, not pin machine, pin number. Like when people say pin number, like pin stands for personal identification number. So you're being redundant. You know, um, ATM machine. The M, is sta the M stands for machine. So like she says uh, yak yards and YAC stands for yards after cat. So he says, actually, you're saying yards after catch yards. Like, okay. Like, and here's the thing. I bet if David said it, it would have been a problem. But when she tries to interject herself into the conversation, talking about Julio Jones and football, they was like, you don't even know how to say the fucking acronyms. Like, it was, that was so shitty to do that to her. And they're, they're definitely very, uh, they're, they're womaning her big time uh, in that ad agency. So um, I like how they did that, but they didn't like, they didn't hit you over the head with a two by four with it. Um, and I also like the fact that uh, we know that Emma wants to direct movies. And I, th I think the way that they, the way that they, the sequence in which they played out these events for her in present day, I thought were kind of interesting, right? Because 
you know, she's up. I can't remember what she was doing. She was at a table or something. And uh, Denzel Curry, I don't even know who the fuck that is. <laughs> Only reason I get all the names is because Gator said it. Uh, walks up and he asked her to direct his video. She like, nah, I just kind of do it for fun. And then we find out in the flashback that no, she actually wants to be a director. And then she sees Gator interact with this kid. And we know that Gator crushed that fucking, uh, after the bar mitzvah rapping on top of that car with his checkup song. So like, I, inevitably, I feel like we're going in a place where Dave's going to do something to fuck up his relationship with Gator. I'm going to fucking die inside. And then... Gata and Emma are going to do a video for checkup and Gata's going to fucking take off like that. And he's not going to need Dave anymore. I feel like that's what's going to happen. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to see it. But it's such good fucking writing, man. I love this show, though. I really do. It's incredible. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about, it is uh, it's a con. But it's again, it's me being selfish because I love this show so much. Like we needed this because I, now I understand now that the episode is over that we've been building up this this storyline of how his narcissism has alienated all of his friends. And this was the episode where we see how he does it with Emma. But I do wish we could have spent some time on, you know, all, all the kind of like other dangling plot threads we have left, like like Allie and that 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 one guy from the restaurant with him, you know, t uh, swiping on her for on that app um, with, you know, what's going on with Mike? Like, is he going to end up leaving the team because he's he feels alienated or lonely? Uh, you know, Dave's relationship with Allie, Dave's relationship with Els. Like, there's so many other things that I, I would, like, they, they, they still kind of have, like, dangling out there that I would have liked to spend a little bit of time on. But um, at the end of the day, uh, I have confidence that they're going to address all these things and that it's kind of just a thing where it's like, okay, we, we're showing you each person, each individual's situation that is 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 severing their relationship with Dave and then it's probably all going to come together in these last three episodes. Like there might be like uh, maybe next week there'll be kind of like more of a maybe an episode that does advance some of those stories a little bit. Does advance maybe like continuing from this cipher a little bit. Then maybe episode nine will be however he ends up screwing things over with Gata. And then in episode 10, they'll either bring everybody back together for a happy ending or run everybody off for a terrible one. But either way. I'm very confident it's going to be a great final three episodes. I, again, I, and, and again, like on the surface, what's so great about this show is that on the surface, there's not too much going on where it's like you would think this would be a great episode of television. It's like, okay, it cuts back and forth between the ad agency and the cipher, like, cool. But it's, it's, it's when you look underneath that top layer and you see what they're doing and you, admire, and you begin to admire what Lil Dicky's doing with his own career, like in real life, like what he's willing to put on screen about himself because I, I looked up online he actually did work at an ad agency and he did uh he worked for Doritos or something and it said that he did like the whole ad campaign for one of the Super Bowls for like Doritos like so he, he he's it, the article said he had like uh 10 TV ads running at 22 years old something like that but um you know the what the fact that he's willing to put himself under this microscope and show us you know all of these kind of like insecurities, right? You know, he talks about them on the show, his insecurities with, you know, his body or his insecurities with his, his rapping. And then we got now his, his, now he's going to have insecurities about his ability to freestyle and be taken seriously. All these people saw him bomb this cypher. He talks openly at the beginning, uh, unironically about how privileged he is. Like, I, I really respect what he's doing. And then like the, the, the grander scheme of tearing down these relationships and showing how this, this, this drive for success can can lead to uh, a narcissism that even breaks Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's shin. So like, there, there's so much going on here, which is why I enjoy this show so much. Because just like last week, they could take something that on the surface seems like a fairly uneventful episode and do so much with it. And um, yeah, another great one, another great one to me. And I, I'm digging the fact that you guys fuck with these videos. Uh, I'm gonna be here for these last three and for any fucking seasons that Dave has in the future because i mean i'm telling you guys i fucking love this show it's gonna it's gonna be in my top 10 uh for 2021 just like season one was in my top 10 for uh 2020 or 2019 whenever it came out th th this exists somewhere on the internet i don't know where i can I I'll, I'll find it but um yeah i love this show it's gonna be in my top 10 they're they're fucking crushing it and i, I can't wait to see what happens so let me know what you guys think in the comments and i'll see you guys next week peace